One of the downsides of travelling by rail is that, as a rule, railway lines don't go through the nicest parts of town. Your first impressions of any place are likely to include crumbling factories, cheap housing and lots and lots of weeds. And sometimes you find yourself wondering if even the railway line itself is being properly looked after. This is Mainkur, a station on one of the routes into Frankfurt. It is, quite simply, a picture of decline and neglect. And yet it is served by, on average, two trains an hour in each direction. But there's even worse at the next stop, Frankfurt Ost. Its once magnificent main hall was bombed during the war and replaced in the 1960s by this monstrosity, which has also been allowed to rot. It is in such bad repair that measures had to be taken to stop part of it literally falling off. What is particularly embarrassing is that this station is just down the road from the European Central Bank. This is not the image that the financial capital of the EU wants to project. Given this, you might be wondering whether this line wasn't deliberately being neglected. And if you thought that, you'd be right. To understand why, you need to know about the S-Bahn, available wherever you see this symbol. It's basically a mass transit commuter rail system, but we need a little bit more detail than that. Local commuter rail services come in different types, with the S-Bahn a common feature in urban areas. S-Bahn systems differ from place to place, but Frankfurt's is typical of those found in major West German cities outside of the Ruhr area. It connects central Frankfurt with surrounding towns and cities, and nearly all of the lines go through a tunnel section connecting the central train station with Frankfurt's main shopping area. As such, it complements the U-Bahn, which is a metro, and the two systems are given equal representation on public transit maps. The history of the S-Bahn began in Berlin in 1930, and in 1934 Hamburg followed suit. And here's a fun fact, nobody is completely certain, but the S in S-Bahn probably stands for Stadt Schnellbahn, which is what Berlin system was being called in 1929, occasionally shortened to SS. Given what happened just a few years later, it's fortunate that they decided to abbreviate the abbreviation. Other cities and urban areas built their S-Bahn systems after the Second World War. The first section of the Rhein-Main S-Bahn, which serves the Rhein-Main metropolitan area centred around Frankfurt, began operating in 1978 and has been continually extended and added to since then. So what differentiates this S-Bahn from other forms of commuter train? Well, it's mostly down to frequency of service. Each line has, at peak times, four trains going in each direction every hour. There are eight lines going through the tunnel section, meaning that there's a train there every couple of minutes. Also, this is one of those S-Bahn systems where trains mostly run on their own tracks and have their own platforms at stations, meaning that most of the time it operates independently of other rail traffic. Ordinary commuter rail services, by contrast, often have to share lines with long-distance trains and they can't run as often. Put very simply, the S-Bahn is a kind of a halfway house between rail services and municipal public transportation networks. And this finally brings us to the point where I can explain why the line through Frankfurt Ost station is so badly neglected. As I said, it's deliberate. It's one of two routes between Frankfurt and Hanau. The route south of the River Main carries, in addition to ordinary long-distance and local trains, S-Bahn trains serving the city of Offenbach. 
but the route north of the mine has no S-Bahn service and trains on that line are routed around Frankfurt to the south and terminate at the central station, so there is no direct connection for commuters bound for Frankfurt's financial and shopping districts. It was always intended to convert this into an S-Bahn line and planning began in 1985. But the money simply wasn't available at the time and so the project was delayed. And then new technical and safety standards came in, adding to the projected costs and causing further delays. Three and a half decades later, it looks as if things might finally start getting underway. It's not a trivial matter though. New tracks will have to be laid. Minecore station will be closed and replaced by a new station at Feschenheim. Most of the other stations will be rebuilt. There will be some pretty major alterations to Hanau's principal station, which is in dire need of modernisation. And Frankfurt Ost will be moved underground, the old above ground station closed for good. Line S5, which currently terminates at Frankfurt Süd, will instead continue east past Konstablerwache and on to Hanau. And since this is an expensive and radical upgrade, Deutsche Bahn is unwilling to invest money in improving the line as it currently exists. Why spend hundreds of thousands modernising Minecore station when it's probably going to be closed down in a few years anyway? The problem, of course, is that this project has been waiting to get off the ground for decades. The news that the North Mine S-Bahn is coming at last has been a staple headline in local newspapers for all of this period. And even now, who knows? The latest news is that the final stages of the planning process have been delayed by the pandemic. But maybe this is it. Finally, the good citizens of Maintal may yet get their fast track access into central Frankfurt and the good citizens of Offenbach may yet get to enjoy slightly less crowded trains. But I'm not holding my breath. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think at this point I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe and activate the notification bell, but you already know that. You don't need me to explain it.